So I just marathoned 10 volumes of Bleach. I need to talk about it. Now before we get started I have to say this video will contain MAJOR spoilers to the first arc of Bleach. Like seriously MAJOR MAJOR spoilers. There is a MAJOR twist at the end of this arc, so if you're not yet caught up to Bleach, then do not watch this video until you are. So I'm really excited to be talking about Bleach, it's a super popular series, a lot of you guys are probably very familiar with it, uh, it's, it's still going, it's been going for like almost 15 years now. And today I'll be giving you my thoughts on the first arc, which is called the Soul Society arc which is the first 21, or more like 20 and a half, volumes of Bleach. I didn't finish volume 21 because that was where the second arc started, and I don't have any more Bleach volumes. So it of course starts off with the introduction of our protagonist Ichigo, who can see ghosts, and then all of a sudden all these hollow things, which are like evil spirits, are coming through, and he meets this girl named Rukia, who is a soul reaper. And soul reapers are basically there to defeat hollows and cleanse their souls and send them to the soul society, which is, you know, basically the afterlife where souls go to live after they die. Now in the beginning, a hollow attacks Ichigo's family and Rukia tries to save them, but she gets defeated so she transfers her powers over to Ichigo, allowing him to become a soul reaper. So he easily takes care of the hollow, but it turns out that Rukia, who only intended to lend her powers to Ichigo, actually permanently gave them to Ichigo. So now he has to become a substitute soul reaper and basically do all of Rukia's work for her. But this is really only the start of the story. Uh, as it goes on, we get to meet a bunch of Ichigo's friends who uh, start to develop their own powers because they've spent so much time around Ichigo. They start to see ghosts as well and hollows and they, they all start getting their own powers because apparently everyone has hidden powers locked away in their soul and all that fun stuff. And these first couple volumes introducing all the characters I really enjoyed. I loved them so much and they were really great but eventually things start to go wrong. Because as it turns out, Rukia giving Ichigo her powers was a crime. So Rukia's brother, who is this like super noble soul reaper dude, he comes by to take her back because she is now to be executed. Ichigo isn't powerful enough to rescue her, so he gets training from this dude named Urahara, who we learn later used to be a soul reaper. So Ichigo gets trained, he learns the name of his Zanpakuto, which is the giant swords that uh, soul reapers carry around and a bunch of Ichigo's friends who also want to help save Rukia, they all train up and then they all end up going to the Soul Society to save her. So a lot of this arc consists of them running through the Soul Society trying to get to Rukia while a bunch of the captains and assistant captains of uh, squads in the Soul Society, squads of Soul Reapers, uh, try to stop them. So there's a bunch of crazy intense battles, a ton of really awesome and epic stuff happens, uh, Ichigo becomes even more and more powerful with each battle and it seems like the main villain of this arc uh, will be Rukia's brother and that in the end him and Ichigo will have a big battle, Ichigo will save the day, and all will be well. <laughs> so yeah, if the arc had played out like the way I would have expected it, it still would have been pretty good. But the reason this arc is held in such high regards to most fans is just because of how crazy the story gets. So once Ichigo and his friends enter the Soul Society, we get introduced to a bunch of soul reapers, uh, such as Ichimaru, who is a friggin' creep. Honestly, the first time you ever get a look at this guy, you know he is going to be evil. Like, no questions asked. This, this dude has the face of someone who is evil. And we see some shady things going on around the soul society, which makes us wonder if this place is as peaceful as it's made out to be. Then eventually, we get introduced to Captain Aizen. Oh man! So this guy's introduced as someone who seems very nice, he's very kind, he cares a lot about his assistants and all, and all that stuff. He especially has a very strong relationship with Momo, who is his assistant captain, and oh, oh man. So throwing a complete curveball, he gets murdered. He gets murdered, Momo goes crazy, she ends up getting arrested because she, she ex suspects that Ichimaru did it because uh, the day before Aizen was like, yeah, you better watch out for that dude. And to be honest, I thought he did it too because he was there, he was acting all suspicious, he's like, oh, I wonder who did this, suffer. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're not fooling everyone, you're obviously evil, you had something to do with this. So anyway, Ichigo confronts Rukia's brother and he's no match for him. Uh, 
He escapes with uh, Yoroichi, who is a former Soul Reaper, and uh, she basically teaches him how to unlock his Bankai, which is like the second form of power, like a power-up for the Soul Reapers. And he shows up right before Rugi is about to be executed and saves her, and then he faces off against her brother, which... Like I said before, I was expecting to be the final big thing that happens in this arc. So he defeats him, of course, and I figured it would just end there. But no. Oh no, it doesn't. So it turns out that Aizen was alive the whole time. And that him and Ichimaru were basically controlling all of the orders that the Soul Society has been giving out. They killed all the guys who were supposed to be doing it, and they've been acting as them. Aizen used some weird hypnosis trick to make everyone believe that he actually died and that that was his dead body there stabbed up on the wall. And their plan all along was to get Rukia executed so they could steal something that Urahara had actually hidden inside of her. Now, this plot revelation was kind of nuts. I kind of wish I had caught my full reaction on camera, because I, I had no idea this was coming. Uh, going into Bleach, I really didn't know all that much about the story. I, nothing really has been spoiled for me. So yeah, seeing this shocking twist friggin' blew my mind. I had no idea. I figured, you know, it was just law. Like, that's the reason Rukia was to be executed. But it was actually because these guys were pulling the strings the entire time. And because Kubo wanted to screw with us even more, Ichimaru shows Momo that Aizen is alive, and she's in shock. She cannot believe this because of how much she liked Aizen. And she goes up to them, he, they hug, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you so much. And then he friggin' just stabs her. He, he, like, he freaking kills her. Okay, he doesn't actually kill her. She ends up living. But, yeah, that was pretty crazy. And it turns out he was lying the entire time. All that, that nice dude that we met a couple volumes back. You know, he never even existed. He was, he was just behind this the whole time. Ever since he became captain, he was planning this. This was such a smart, smart twist. And it just made the series so much better for me. But Aizen doesn't get defeated in this arc. He, of course, escapes because, you know, this series is freaking gigantic and they need some reason to keep it going. So yeah, I got that out of the way, um, but I still have a bunch more I want to talk about. I loved a ton of these characters and learning about their backstories, a lot of the Soul Reapers. Renji was a really awesome character. At first he helped capture Rukia, uh, but as it turns out they were childhood friends and he really didn't want to see her executed, so by the end he ended up training with Ichigo uh, to unlock his Bankai, and then he goes after her. But another thing that I really liked about Bleach is that even though it's, you know, a shonen battle manga, a lot of the main characters get defeated. In fact, most of the time, the main characters do get defeated. I mean, when Renji goes to confront Rukia's brother, uh, he starts attacking with her. He's way more powerful than he used to be. But Rukia's brother, whose name I can't remember, by the way, that's why I keep uh, referring to him by as that. But he just beats his ass down. He's, he's all bloody. Renji's on the floor. He's, like, dying. And Renji's like, no, I can't lose. I gotta do it. So then he goes crazy. He musters up all of his strength. He stands up. He tries to attack him again. But... He, he freaking loses. I mean, in most shonen battle manga I've read, every time something like that happens to a character, he musters up all of his inner strength. Yes, uh, I will fight to save my Nakamas and nothing can stop me. Like, they'll always end up winning. But no, not in Bleach. That Everyone just freaking gets beat up all the time. It also does a really good job of just showing how powerful some of these fools are, because they are insane. There's one guy in particular, Kenpachi, his spiritual energy is always just like exploding all over the place and he, he's just crazy powerful. There was also a lot of sad moments in this arc, uh, you know, right from the beginning when we learned about uh, how Ichigo's mother died and that whole thing at the graveyard and then we of course learned about um, Rukia's old mentor who she ended up having to kill because he was possessed by a hollow. I mean, that, that really sucked. I also have to praise Tite Kubo's art because it is very, very good. I think all the character designs are awesome. The Soul Reapers look like badasses. The action is insane and it's intense and it's fast paced and it's so, so good. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Soul Society arc. I just thought it was 
excellent. What an insane way to start a series just with this big long arc that is just has amazing build up, amazing characters, has such great action and has a crazy crazy plot twist at the end. Now I hate to say it but it's probably going to be a while before I read more Bleach. I do plan on getting the second box set however I'm not going to be doing that for a while just because I have a ton more manga that I still have to read, but eventually I will get around to it, and when I do, I will review the second arc. So with that, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Also, the next story arc review I do will actually not really technically be for a story arc, it will be for part one of Naruto, so you can look forward to that.